Hey folks, it's Art Wolf. Welcome. We have an unboxing for us today, and uh, this comes courtesy of the co-designer David Thompson, who sent it to me. Thank you, David. Um, this is Europe Divided by David Thompson and Chris Marling. This is a competitive game of post-Cold War influence over Europe. I find it interesting that there is a space in which one has to say it is competitive rather than um, just assuming that as board games are traditionally competitive. Um, I think that's neat that we have now seen so many cooperative games in the space that we, we, we need to say that. I think that's good. Um, and it is from Phalanx and it is a, in a, well, it looks like about a 12 inch square box, roughly two and a half inches thick, I would say, maybe not quite three inches. Yeah, not quite three inches. Um, and it's got a, a whole bunch of very fancy pieces. So let us open her up and see what Europe Divided looks like. So the box is pretty cool, for one thing. I'm trying to remember not to throw anything in the garbage can, which does not have a, a bag in it right now. Um, so Europe Divided, rule book. Let's take a look at that first. So we have glossy paper, we have 20 pages, and I'm going to guess wildly and say that it's profusely illustrated, and it definitely appears to be. Um, I'm going to guess that by typical hex and counter standards, the complexity here is probably relatively low. This is a very interesting looking game, however. This is, by the way, a two-player game. Anyway, so all of these, basically, there's some, some reference charts at the back, but you got about 18 pages of rules in large print, shiny paper, and all that. Uh, we do have two-player aids, actually. We have uh, a color-coded, so one for each player. Headline segment steps. Ooh, that's interesting. So it looks like things change over the course of the game. And then the rest of the player aid. And these are on like half eight and half by 11 ish sheets. We do have uh, counters or chits, as I think we'll call them in this case. And these presumably represent influence. These represent some kind of naval capability. Don't know what these are, and I don't know what these are yet. And these are, uh, you know, the pre rounded, fancy, thick, thick core stuff that one typically sees in games with the really high production values. Um, we do also have, ooh, look at this. All right, we got a whole huge bag of dice. And I, I want to say these may be used to mark influence on the map. Uh, we've got some baggies, a cardboard insert, um, and two decks of cards, one of which are not quite double-sized, but, but really quite big. I wonder if these are the headline cards. Very possibly. And we have a mounted map. So let's let's bust out the mounted map and take a look at that first. Alright, so nice looking mounted map. Um, it shows Europe from Spain and the Iberian Peninsula to the UK all the way east to various places in Russia and all of the various places in between, including the exclave of Kaliningrad interestingly, and uh, the Scandinavian countries as well. Don't see Iceland on here, but I imagine that's probably because they're not particularly interesting. Um, so, and then we have down here into the Caucasus as well. Not sure if you can see that. Uh, we have a turn track up on the top of the board that looks like there's 20 turns to the game. Um, and there are special instructions in some of, again, I, I don't know that you can see that. You probably can now. There are special instructions in certain turns. So... Let's take a look at the fancy cards. Very fancy cards, actually. I'm going to struggle like an idiot to get them, get them open, of course. But uh, that's just the way things work around here. All right. Yeah, so these are very, very large cards. If you're going to put these in, now oh, looks like we we have something that proceeds in phases here of some kind. So we have a new Cold War versus New World Order. These are probably all New World Order. So very interesting, uh, very interesting here. I very much want to try this. And then we have these 
much more standard sized cards, which there's a like a band to open it, but then I always like stumble on that band. There we go. That actually worked this time. Which is a rarity. Okay, so uh, looks like there's a whole bunch of different types of things in here. Okay, so we have what looks like cards for each of the different countries or territories or areas, most of which correspond to countries. Um, uh, but then we have cards for things like energy sector, military industrial complex, news media, secret services, southern federal, and for each of the uh, Russian districts as well. And the backs are different, so you have Russia versus Europe on the backs. So I don't know if you draw these randomly. I don't know. I don't know enough about this game. And I'm unwilling, given the uh, designer's history of innovation, uh, to make too many assumptions and sound stupid you know, for the purposes of the unboxing video. And then we have what look like two different naval territory cards for the Black Sea and the Baltic Sea. So this looks uh, very high production values. Um, I think there's no reason for anyone to have qualms about the production values. Um, very nice looking product from Phalanx Games and uh, the two co-designers. And it's an interesting topic that I haven't really seen tackled by anybody else is what happens, you know, the Cold War is over and Russia is again positioning itself um, you know, regardless of what you think the geopolitical reasons for that are, as an antagonist to the rest of Europe. Um, how does that play out? Aha! Uh -huh. In this case, we play it out as a, a fairly interesting looking board game. Um, it is an interesting topic. Like I said, I haven't seen anybody else really even try to deal with this on a, on a, on a strategic level like this, as opposed to you know, things like Putin Strikes and the Next War series from GMT, which have attempted to simulate the military engagements of such a conflict um, at an operational level. Um, this is a strategic level approach to that subject, and it's very interesting looking. So I would like to thank David, first of all, for sending me this. Um, also, I'd like to thank you, the viewer, for watching the video. If you'd like to help support our World Star, please do check out the links in the video description, including the Patreon and the merch store and the Ko-Fi. Um, so please check those out. Please do subscribe to the channel, thumbs up on the video, and click the little bell icon to get notified when new content comes out. That really helps the channel in terms of the YouTube algorithm. Once again, thanks for watching, and until next time, happy wargaming.